That's me, Michael Strahan, on my usual home field, the football gridiron. But today, I'm getting my hands dirty with power tools. We're building a skateboard half pipe in the backyard of a skateboard loving family. CDX? Yeah, I got it. With brute strength and a little ingenuity, we're assembling over 135 pieces of lumber. Ow! And we're grinding out a pipe that skateboarders call a coping rail. Carpenter Amy Wynn Pastor is here to help me out with all kinds of tips and tricks. Where the X is, that's where the center line will be. Everyone pitches in. You guys, hold it tight. This is the one the girls made. <laughs> and everyone takes their lungs. <laughs> this is Backyard Stadium. I'm here with a family that's passionate about what they do, skateboarding. Our family is definitely all about skateboarding. Wendy and I, I mean, we're never going to grow up anyway. I think we're the main instigators. We keep everything going. I think that part of the reason my kids love skateboarding so much and have so much energy about it is because I loved it and I skated when I was younger. In fact, I have my first skateboard that I made, uh, made out of fiberglass with roller skate wheels and uh, very different than today. They even opened their own skateboard shop. The sports have definitely brought us closer together and given us, um, you know, a common bond. I saw my stepbrother, Blake, doing it. I just wanted to try. It's not for everyone, and that's what's cool about it. I think it actually is a real sport, and there's clean-cut guys that skate. The boys even took the sport indoors. So my brother decided we also needed a half-pipe in the basement. My friend Brian and I were pretty bored in the middle of the winter time. We sort of like, my parents went away. The half pipe is a great way to practice all those fancy tricks. But when it's in the basement, those low ceilings get in the way. So we're going to take it outside and build a monster half pipe in the backyard. One, two, three, skate! Yeah. To help us out, Amy Wynn Pastor is here. She's got years of carpentry experience, and she's got the plan. Hello. Come on in, Wynn. <laughs> hello, hello. Here are the plans. This is exciting. This is a big project. Our half pipe will be 21 feet long and 16 feet wide. We'll need lots of wood, cinder block, steel pipe, and a specialty skating surface called Skate Light. All the details are at DIYNetwork.com. So I hope you guys are prepared to do a lot of work. First, we've created a cut list. Basically, it's a list of the wood we're going to need for the project. And believe me, there's a lot of wood to cut. Rather than having to lug them over to the saw, lug them back over, it's so much easier to be able to stack them all up together. <laughs> a pile of two by fours that come from the lumber yard will usually vary slightly in length. We need over 72 by fours to use as joists. We stack and line them up, and we cut them to exactly 94 and a half inches. Cutting wood like this gives us another great way to save time. The nice thing is, is that once you saw through the entire length, then the pieces that are underneath that will have a groove set in, and it's like immediately marking them rather than having to go back and, and remeasure. Once mom and the girls are done cutting our stack down the sides, they'll move it all to the backyard. Meanwhile, we'll begin to work on the sides of our ramp. Our half pipe has a three foot drop, that'll give us a curved surface of 48 inches. Now, we'll be building two ramps on each side and a straightaway section in between. All right, Wynn, looking at the plans, I know we have the sides of the ramp. Yep. Have a nice radius, a nice arc. How do we yes. reach that? All we need to do is, you find the very center, no. I put on that axis point a nail and tie a string to it. And for that, I just use like a slip knot, okay. slide it over. Nimble Fingers is not my middle name. <laughs> Keeping the string stretched out, you draw the radius. You'll be able to get two curved sides from each Actually, sheet of plywood. Really then you cut the arc with the jigsaw. We have to make eight of these. Yes. And we have four ramps we have to build. Right. Yeah, I'm trying. When we return, our skateboard family really gets to work. And I mean everyone. I never thought I'd see the day when both my sisters would have power tools in their hands, let alone building a half pipe. Why they call it a half pipe, we'll explain. And we'll ramp up the fun. Hey, guys, hold it tight. This is the one the girls made. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still talking a lot of smack out here. And we'll learn some tricks from a master. Come on back. The new Yankee Workshop is the newest addition to DIY.
Brought to you by Prudential Real Estate. The future of real estate now. Welcome back. This is Michael Strahan. Today we're here with a family that just loves skateboarding. So we're building a half pipe. They've already got one in their basement, but we're building a much bigger one in their backyard. If you're wondering why it's called a half pipe, it's because of its shape. It resembles a pipe cut across its diameter, hence the name, half pipe. All right, it's time for Wynn to get started on the foundation. The foundation plan, seen here from above, call for us to place support blocks in key areas of our half pipe. Wynn and her extra set of hands, John Pecos, decide where to place the first cinder block. That will serve as a starting point. We'll add from here and eventually we'll wind up with 12 supports. The object is to make the half pipe as level as possible without having to regrade the entire area. We have all these different sized cinder blocks. We have to sink them into the ground at different depths. After digging out an area for the block, we'll use a two by four to help us make sure that they are level in relationship to each other. We'll need the two by four because the level is not quite long enough to reach from cinder block to cinder block. We're actually measuring how far we need to sink the opposite cinder block. The cinder blocks will also keep the wood ramp from rotting by keeping them off the ground. We also need to make sure that everything is squared up. So we cross measure the diagonals and if they match, we're squared. Perfect. With the blocks in place, we get to work on building the ramp. We begin with the two end sections and attach the two by fours exactly eight inches apart. All the wood we're working with is pressure treated. So John and the boys simply work their way down the curved bookend and attach the two by fours using three inch deck screws. This one's pretty easy. These guys are working like a well-oiled machine. Meanwhile, the girls are working on a ramp of their own. So before you know it, we had a battle going on. I never thought I'd see the day when both my sisters would have power tools in their hands, let alone building a half pipe. You gotta love competition. <laughs> Take the bottom out. Down, down, down. We're wasting time. Right on the X. See the X? Yeah, I got it. There you go. I like that. You got it. Okay. If we finish this fast, then we can uh, <laughs> do a few more. <laughs> we can do a few more and maybe beat the boys. You want low speed, am I? Yeah. We don't want low speed. No, we want we high speed. speed. We're using extra long deck screws, so we want to make sure we had enough torque. Don't, yeah. don't show up. Want me to hit you in the head with it? <laughs> You're fired. Take that bottom one off. I gotta turn it a little. Uh oh. Okay, uh oh. <laughs> Keep going. We got about uh, 2,000 more to do. John's not far off. We need nearly 3,500 screws for this project. All right, gang. Hey, We're doing good. Let's pick up the pace okay. a little bit. We definitely put much energy as we could into it, and we did it right. <laughs> Hurry, hurry. <laughs> the girl team rocked it out. We enjoyed ourselves, and we really took the time to know the process. We'll soon have a total of four ramps. <laughs> then we'll double up the ramps on each side of the half pipe to give us a nice big surface. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Good time. The results of our ramp bending contest are in. It took the women 14 minutes. <laughs> it took the men seven minutes. <laughs> All right. And remember, we need to make sure we clear the cinder blocks. We don't want to knock them over. Hey, guys, hold it tight. This is the one the girls made. Oh. <laughs> you better watch yourself. I see the competition is not over. We're still talking a lot of smack out here. One, two, two three. three. Eve hold. Once the ramps are sitting squarely on the concrete blocks, our 16-foot-wide half pipe is looking soft. Oh, yeah, baby. Can you see it? Are you like on your board right now? Coming together. All right, I say let's get the rest of the floor on this puppy. To complete the floor section, Wynn cuts additional two by fours. She also cuts smaller pieces, which we'll later use to reinforce sections of the ramp. And as usual, little Danny is in the thick of the action. Danny is so enthusiastic about this project, which is so great because he's been such a great help. He's getting involved with everything. He's like, more, more. A lot of people get nervous about kids Danny's age getting involved with power tools. The truth is, is that it's completely safe. You just need to have somebody there who knows what they're doing, who knows the proper use of all the tools. 